friends. Hey. We're back. I'm JP. And I'm Ryland and we're Rainsford Photography where we're all about growing confidence for you, the wedding photographer. So today we are actually going to be talking to you about something that we get questions about all the time, which is how to even start being a wedding photographer. So lots of people will DM us and ask, hey, how did you even begin your business? How did you become a wedding photographer? Who did you second shoot under? All those kinds of things. And so today we are gonna explain all of that and a little bit more for you. That's right, because guys, we were there. We wanted to start, we decided we were wanting to move towards weddings and it felt like there were a million and one things that we needed to do to start, just to start which was totally overwhelming and very easily becomes paralyzing. And so they're really, like JP said, just three things that we wanna share with you guys today to help you start. Get over that paralysis, subdue the overwhelm feeling, and just start. And so I hope that this will be super, super helpful for you. All right, friends, let's dive in. Our first tip for you on how to become a wedding photographer is simply this practice. Now the old saying practice makes perfect is not just for kicks, it is actually true. So when we decided that we wanted to become wedding photographers, a few things that we did were things like we called friends to be models for us, we'd go on engagement shoots, we'd do anniversary shoots, we'd basically take every opportunity that we could to practice and to make mistakes on people that were our friends and not clients. So all of those learning opportunities along the way really added up for us to boost our confidence, but then also give our friends some great photos along the way too. So practicing with friends, practicing all types of different things, not just couples, but we would also save when we get invitations for our friends' weddings in the mail, we would save those invitation suites and we'd use our own wedding rings to practice details, things like that. So as you grow in your skill, you can start collecting things around your house, laying out invitation suites and details and taking the time to practice in your space that you are comfortable in will pay off greatly for when you get on the wedding day and it's a time crunch and you have to do all those things uh, on the wedding day for an actual client you've practiced and you've made this space before so practice 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 yeah and a couple other comments on that is that a lot of that stuff we did for free like we would reach out to our to our married friends and say hey could we do an engagement shoot like it's <laughs> really like an anniversary shoot but we would do it either for free or for very little money um, because that was a way for us to practice, mm -hmm. but also for us to, to bless our friends, which is a great benefit for them, and it helped build our portfolio so that when we actually started going to like paying clients, we could say like, here's some examples of our work. Like we're not just fluffing this up. Like we actually do stuff. We actually yes. take pictures, yeah. you know? Um, so it was really, really valuable, but it is a bit of a sacrifice, but it's an investment. That's the way to think about it. It's just an investment. Um, but we wouldn't just practice with friends like that. We would also reach out to other photographers or maybe a few years ahead of us and try to seek out any opportunity that we could to second shoot on a wedding day. Um, second shooting is a phenomenal way to dip your big toe in without being under all the pressure of like being the lead photographer and having to capture everything and really kind of observe like what's happening here. What are the dynamics in during family formals that we need to be aware of mm -hmm. so that when we do this ourselves, you know, we can really lead in that moment with confidence. Um, and so second shooting was a huge, huge benefit also, and really helped us refine our skills in a lower pressure scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it also gave us the chance and access to other photographer friends of ours um, to ask them a lot of questions, to learn from their experience, things like that. Yeah. So that kind of leads into our second thing, which is finding a mentor. Uh, man, the truth is when you're trying to start a business, like it's so easy to waste effort and waste time because you just don't know a lot of things. And the truth is we don't have time for that. Like we did not have time for that. And so we very quickly and very early on invested in good mentorship from yes. people who were really well, like did excellent work, were well respected in the photography industry. Um, and we didn't pay them for a lot of their time, but even that little bit of time that we spent with them was incredibly beneficial um, and set us up for so much more success uh, that we've been reaping the benefits from 
ever since then. Right. So when we first started our business five years ago, we actually hired Lauren Carnes mm -hmm. to come along. <laughs> and she was the person that really stepped in. Our, our waters were kind of muddy on which way we wanted to focus our business. And she kind of just came in and helped us clear the water on like, what we were going to do, what we were going to focus on, and the foundations for our business. So she helped us lay those pillars down. And as we did more mentorship with her, things just became clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And I'm telling you, that took so much stress off of us, but it also gave us the opportunity just to ask questions and to feel like we weren't alone in doing anything. We felt like we had um, a friend in the industry and honestly when you start your own business it can feel really lonely it can feel yeah. super isolating yeah. and she was there all along the way even through 2020 we have asked her so many questions she's just been a great help so find someone who is five years I would say is a good kind of buffer three to five years ahead of you and say like this is this is where I'd like to be I really admire um, this team or this photographer for a certain reason and I'd love to learn how they set themselves up and how they got there and really just invest with them, invest time. It's just really going to pay off as you become a wedding photographer. That's right. Cause you can't afford to waste time. Like we said, that's really the bottom line. Um, and it's just great to make friendships with it's other great. good photographers. Yes. <laughs> and you'll find that you'll benefit from that for a long time, yes. not just through your mentorship. Absolutely. Yeah. So our last tidbit is to... Invest in education. <laughs> Early on in our business, we identified, especially one year, that like, man, we've really got to grow in our ability to pose, in our ability to use external lighting, and in our kind of like business fundamentals, our small business excellence. And so we invested in courses um, from top rated, well-known photographers in each of those three areas. And it was incredibly beneficial. So how did we do this? We were so small. We had just a little bit of money that we were making and we also wanted to invest in ourselves. We actually just set up a line item in our photography budget that said, this is how much we're going to make. And this is the percentage that we want to invest back in ourselves. And so that's how much money we have for education. So go back to your budget, figure out how much you can invest and then figure out what you want to invest in. If that's lighting, if that's posing, if it's all of it and you want one full course <laughs> that you can invest in where you don't have to invest in anything else, we have something coming your way. The Confident Wedding Photographer. So that will be coming in 2021 <laughs> and all beyond. So if that is something you're interested in, please leave us a comment below. We will be sure to get you on our email list so you can get all those offers and promotions right away. That's right. So friends, education is really a huge piece. And like JP mentioned, it's an investment in yourself. And that's not just a great way to avoid uh, wasting time, but it's also really inspiring and encouraging. Um, there are so many days when we're just in the grind of our photography business. And sometimes it can just feel really like, just like a grind, you know? But then every time we take a step back to invest in ourselves through education, <laughs> yeah. which is something we've actually done every year yes. of our business and still do today, we still highly prioritize that for ourselves. It is just so refreshing and inspiring and motivating and it helps us to get back out there and to shoot weddings um, with a lot of energy and excitement and enjoyment. Uh, and so it's a huge benefit that we don't always expect. Um, and so if you want to be have confidence for every single part of the wedding day, um, we are going to walk through the exact experience that we had that has built up our confidence and our ability for every single aspect of a wedding day um, in a bunch of individual courses or classes that will all be rolled into one big course that will really give you everything you need to conquer your next wedding day with confidence. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again next time. Thanks friends. See ya. Our how to become a wedding photographer is... To... <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll take it. Invest in education. <laughs>